No, it wasn't. For for me, it was never there. For me, I thought I had to make really pretty pictures. And I spent all of my college career years at ILM focused on making something look realistic and really pretty. And I never focused on design. Like that took so long because eventually you work inside of a box, right? When you work on a project, but I never allowed myself to, to think of things in in challenging ways that challenged the norm and really broke out of that. I, I feel like I'm, I'm just like 99% of artists right now. And every student listening to this or every artist listening to this, they know what I'm talking about, where it's just like, you're not looking, really looking at the person's design. You're looking at how well they painted it. Oh, the brush strokes. Oh, what material was that? What program did you use? Right? Yeah. That's who I was. Rethinking your creative approach can be the key to truly unlocking your abilities and take your career to the next level. This is exactly what our next guest discovered. Not only will you hear about it in detail today, but you can also learn this in their brand new Learn Squared course. So, please welcome senior concept artist and your new Learn Squared instructor, Luis Carrasco, who joins us to let us know all about his powerful new course, Rethinking Weapon Design, details of which you can check in the links attached to this episode. Luis shares with us the personal journey that led to a major breakthrough in his artistic voice and value as a professional, which is something we can all relate to, no matter the level you are at, on your own journey. So get ready to get inspired and rethink how you approach your artistry and self. Let's go. Right. Okay. Cool. Let's do this. All uh, right. Cool. Hey, everyone. Welcome back to Let's Get Podcast, and I'm delighted to welcome on our next guest, Luis Carrasco. Welcome, Luis. Hello. Hello. Thanks for having me. So glad to have you on. Um, looking forward to having a chat with you, digging deeper into your world, your creative world, and also talk about another thing you got happening with us, which is your brand new Learn Squared course, rethinking yeah. weapon design, um, which if you're listening to when this airs, um, pre-orders are still available. So hit the links, check it out. You get a nice juicy discount, but more importantly, you get a nice juicy workflow. But before we get into all of that, Lewis, please let our guests, uh, our guests and our audience know who you are. Yeah. So uh, again, Luis, <laughs> I've been in the, uh, uh, I guess I've been a concept artist for it's hard to even know. I think 11 years now wow. has been a while. <laughs> and uh, yeah, um, like how much detail should I give? I don't even know. <laughs> as much as you want. As much as you want. I guess like. All right. Well, yeah. I guess I could, I, could tie, I could tie it in. So yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, I've been a concert artist for 11 years and um, I started out, like I grew up in like the Central Valley. So there, there's not much art out there. So I went to school in the Bay Area and um I went to college and, you know, and I didn't really learn much in college. Like I, I, I learned like some software, but I didn't really learn a lot. And then, um, I matched like network and I met, I eventually met my mentor, like before I graduated. And, uh, that led me to, uh, getting an assistant job at industrial light and magic in the uh, art department. And then, um, so that was like boot camp for concept art. And, uh, I stayed at ILM for, seven years and you know i got promoted like a couple times and then um yeah eventually i went into games like in la and uh then i decided to become a freelance artist and i started doing that during covid and i'm still doing freelance and still jumping between film and game but over the years like i, I you know i learned so much about myself and my process and uh I, I, a big part of it was my relationship with my art and like designs and, and my portfolio, which I would always, I mean, I think everyone can relate like, a, a, you know, we've talked about it, right? Like, uh, working on your portfolio is like the hardest thing ever. Um, and so I wanted to kind of address those issues in this tutorial and also kind of introduce concept art as a whole. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that's what led me to learn squared. And, you know, I feel like we made something that's pretty awesome. For sure. Um, one thing that really stood out to me 
and always will is um, when we're speaking about before the course launched was like the driving force of what's at the center of it what's what really do you want students to gain from it and yeah you pretty much nailed it was like really let them well empower them to be able to get their ideas to life and also address all of the pressure points that we all get as artists especially when you're trying to figure things out right um yeah what but like for yourself and you mentioned there's a lot of discovery in your own journey what was it like for you like did you kind of get things pretty quickly or are you more like an up and down artist where like things go well then you kind of like um recollect and find out okay now i'm taking a few steps back and we'll go back to my fundamentals or is it just complete uh, victory of like you know all the way up no bell curve whatsoever oh no man i feel like you, i feel like it's been more time in the down than the up because <laughs> like but that's part of the journey right yeah. and i think uh i think i've spent more time I, I think a majority of the time that i spend like on my own art or even professionally like professionally not so much like i i know what i need to do to get a job done mm -hmm. but um like over like over the years I, I think i got to a certain point where i stopped like I, I would spend time in the low where it's just like okay i think i need to learn this program and how to render and stuff like that but you always stay in the low because you learn the program you know to a certain level but you're still not delivering the way you want to deliver and like so you know you just spend so much time on the down because you're just like is it me like are my skills not there because i yeah. see these other artists are producing so uh i started doing this thing where i would just really address like the moments where i struggled so it's like okay i'm really excited to sketch all right i'm sketching i'm sketching hey like i'm kind of like i notice i stop at this point and i like go do something else or i watch a movie or i make an ex you know excuse to do something else so i started to really like try to figure out what it was about that point that got me to uh to stop and and once i started doing that i noticed i started producing work much faster and uh finishing things but even with finishing things it's just like what took so long to like why did it take so long to finish this and if i'm not happy with it how how can i be happy with it so after that i found this like medium ground where it's just like yeah like i have ups and downs but i kind of stay more in like this like middle mm. you know line where everything is so I, so it's easier to like be up and down but not not so drastically that what you just described there is pretty much what i've been going through for the last 12 months and by 12 yeah. months is that's like acknowledging that's what I've been going through. When I think, in fact, it's been happening for a few years before that. Um, yeah. Like, acknowledging is acknowledging's a big, big thing. Just to acknowledge it, you know, is yes. a huge thing. And like for yourself, has this happened? Because for me, like I've had stages where like this happened back at high school, then like before we have university of like college. And there's like, there's definitely like milestones where, oh, that was that time when I, I fixed this up or I switched up on this or I figured this out. Well, I got rid of that bad habit. Um, what was the last time for yourself where you did kind of start looking back again, like internally and thinking, okay, I need to kind of really switch this up. Like, was it a particular project? Was it more so not being able to realize what you want to realize? Like, was there any specific thing or was it maybe a bunch of things? Uh, I would say a bunch of things, but yeah, you know, I know what you mean. Like there were mm -hmm. certain moments like, I learned ZBrush uh, pretty quickly when I started at ILM and uh, learning like their techniques. So, so what I did is I spent a lot of time trying to emulate all the other artists in the department. Um, but it still wasn't like, I, I still couldn't create artwork the way they did. Like my, it's, so I started to really try to explore on my own and what I needed. So I tried everything I, I looked up different artists and try to emulate them i think mm -hmm. we all do that right yeah. to find our technique but then um when i left ilm and i was working in games uh one of my art directors there uh josh herman he, he was so awesome like he really encouraged me to sketch the way i wanted to sketch which really was liberating but it, it still took time for me to kind of get comfortable with the idea of like sketching out an idea without it needing to be like a really pretty painting so um 
I started doing that and, and that was good, but I was still holding myself back to a degree because I was still focused on making a pretty painting. Yeah. So I, um, one of my buddies, uh, uh, Miles, uh, Miles, he, um, Miles Williams, I think is his last name. He, um, I mean, he and I were living together and I remember I did a painting and he kind of suggested like using some photo textures to like plus it out to get like this extra detail. And I had, I had always done that right with my other designs. And so, uh, I started to, so I started doing it more often, but then I realized, um, that I was spending so much time in 3d that in the painting stage, uh, I actually wasn't using any of the 3d that I had sculpted. Like I spent hours sculpting. So it's just mm. like, you know, I always end up grabbing a photo texture cause it looks more believable. So I started to, um, you started to uh, kind of dial things back where I started to explore more with photo textures. So I started creating like simplified geometry and rendering it and putting photo textures. It still looks weird. So uh, I started uh, just going straight to photo textures. I'm like, all right, I'm just going to, I know if I paint the lighting correctly or decently enough and put photo textures, it'll look like the thing I want it to look mm -hmm. like so I can explore faster. So then I started doing more of that. And then there was this moment where it's just like, Hey, I, I can, you know, you can, you can just duplicate this and just like paint on top of it and make mm -hmm. something completely different, stretch everything out, make mistakes. And I started to really let myself make mistakes and do crazy things. And then I realized how powerful that was. Cause I spent all the time learning this 3d software that when it came to jobs, I could show them these sketches and they really responded to the sketches. Mm -hmm. I could build them in 3D, like whenever I was ready to, if, if I even needed to. And, uh, and then it would look like this really well thought out idea, but I spent all my time in the beginning stages, mm -hmm. but more than just like a 2D drawing, you know, just like really figuring it yes. out. And, and yeah. that really changed, uh, everything for me. And I started getting excited to do personal yeah. work. Yeah. Dude, yeah, man, I can totally relate. Like, there is something about that beginning stage. And yeah. um, in a previous episode, uh, one of our guests had also said that, like, that's the, um, and I'm paraphrasing here, but that's the, that's the stage where they're put most attention, but also most anxious about, because that's, if you get it right then, then everything else will fall in place. Because Everything's is, so easy. Yeah. yeah. Everything's so easy. Um, the hardest part is letting yourself explore your imagination and making mistakes. That's why in the tutorial, that's all I talk about is just like, just have fun, duplicate it. If you're getting too precious, you know, you know, when you start getting precious with a painting yes. and you don't want to mess it up and you just spend hours on the same spot, you know, that you're trying not to mess it up. So it's just like, yeah, duplicate it and mess that one up. And then yeah. when you do that, you end up looking back at the other one and realizing how much you really didn't work on it because you were so scared mm -hmm. of uh, finishing it. So, um, yeah, w really, when, once you get to that point, you really realize that you have really good ideas. You're just, you know, holding yourself back. And it's like, especially, I mean, where, where do you think, at least for yourself from your own perspective, um, what do you think happened with your own journey? where or maybe like just from your observations maybe even working with colleagues as well where you've noticed this obviously you mentioned that you mentor a lot of students as well so you've seen a lot of yeah, pressure points yeah. from students what they're constantly asking hence why the course was built the way it was specifically to answer those but like what are the common things that you think at least from your perspective is to why we as creatives tend to fall into that pattern that habit i'd say it's a healthy habit when you realize it and you can fix it mm -hmm. but unhealthy when you don't realize it of like mm -hmm. you said, like, you know, trying to more focus on making a pretty picture or refine it beyond the point it needs to be refined versus the, like you said, like, you know, just focus on getting out ideas and unlocking your imagination. As creatives, yeah. it's almost like, not hypocritical, maybe it's a bad word to use, but it's almost like it seems the opposite to what a creative would normally be where you think, oh, they can invent anything they want. But then yeah. you also almost like block ourselves from doing so because maybe it's fixation on process or pleasing imposter syndrome. Yeah. I'd love to get your insight on that and um, let dive into that topic a little bit more. 
Yeah, so uh, I definitely noticed that about myself. And, and I think that's something that every artist struggles with um, for a while. And I feel like those of us that have gotten out of that mindset are the ones that we all know because their they, their work is just so amazing. And they end up being the pioneers of a shape language, like Vitaly Bulgarov, right? His like mechs and stuff like that, never seen them before, but he got to a point where he could really let himself explore his process and his delivery and his designs. And everyone loves them because we've never seen that before. Now it's become a staple in what everyone strives to get to. But, you know, and it's fine to emulate, you know, some of your favorite artists, but I think like the best thing is really just to just, oh man, the, the best thing is to really take your time and, and let yourself make mistakes. Because it, when I've taught, I've noticed everyone is, was just like me where they would just focus on the rendering and trying to make something look like what's acceptable in the art society, right? Like you yourself, when you like images, it's like my image doesn't look like that. So that must be right. Cause it has a thousand likes. So my image only has 10 likes. So I'm doing something wrong. It's like, you're not doing something wrong. Mm -hmm. It's like, um, what you have to do is understand these things. Blender, you can learn Blender. There's YouTube videos, right? How to render something with subsurface scattering. You can learn that in a video. Like it'll tell you exactly how to do that, right? Uh, ZBrush, you can learn ZBrush, right? That's fine. We got those things checked off. And um, how how to light something dynamically or whatever. There's tutorials on that. They'll tell you exactly where to place the light. What's the one thing that's not taught? in any school even, is design. No one ever teaches design, mm -hmm. right? So when I've taught my classes, um, first, I, I noticed everyone struggled with that part, right? And I struggled with it for many years. And, you know, I, I still struggle with it, right? Everyone does. So, so, so the first thing was just like, okay, do you want to be a draftsman? If the answer is yes, then it's like, okay, you should take a lot of drawing classes and understand that your job is going to be to draw things draw batman draw whatever it is and that's that's your job second question is do you want to be a, a designer and a concept artist yes okay understand that that is not what a draftsman is mm -hmm. yeah there are draftsmen that can't design but you want to be a designer so what should your skills be focused on designing it's like okay so what's holding you back from designing this uh uh sci-fi space helmet it's like okay well what did, what did you spend today doing? It's like, well, sketching helmets. Show me how you're sketching helmets. They're literally drawing it. But I noticed they were like spending all their time trying to render it to make it look like a spherical helmet. Mm -hmm. It's like, okay, so number one, how can you save time? Mm. You know what it looks like. So grab this like motorcycle helmet, paint all the detail off or whatever. Now you have something that's perfectly proportional to what you want. It's like, okay, what's the next thing? It's like, well, I want to design like this, this, and this. It's like, okay let's say there's a headset in it right or something that covers your eyes like let's say it's something from dragon ball z with a visor right it's like okay put that visor in there chances are they're just going to draw like a simple shape to represent the visor it's like okay so this is a design opportunity right mm -hmm. um how do you train your eye to design it's like okay first thing we know it needs to go over your eyes right it's like okay but what are what are other things that we can use for that what does the glass look like right? We haven't explored what the glass looks like. Okay, so let's start looking at reference. Chances are they're going to look at lit uh, direct reference, which I mentioned a lot in the tutorial, which is they're going to look at different glass, right? Different visors, uh, motorcycle visors, uh, sn uh, snowboarding sunglasses, stuff like that, where they're just going to change the color. It's like, well, you can do that, but who says that the visor has to come from the side, right? What if, what if it were to come down? What if... um you know, there was something that they wore on their forehead and then the visor just came down automatically. Like no, no one says that this helmet needs to be what we traditionally believe a helmet to look like, right? You can really explore. Like what if the helmet is just like a half shell that sits on the top of your head, like a hat or something like that. And then it extends down and it's all glass or it's this plastic wrap around your face yeah, or something yeah. like that. Already you're allowing yourself to think so out, so outside the box. And it's just like, dude, just grab a bunch of photos, um, 
put them together to explain your idea to yourself. It's like, okay, you've explained it. Now learn, we know that ZBrush, Blender, all these other programs, Photoshop, there are tutorials that tell you exactly how to use them. Mm -hmm. And find some lighting reference, right, of like a person wearing a helmet or something like that, whatever perspective you want. It's like, okay, here are all the things that you need to make something look pretty, but you have the one thing that no one has, is a design no one has seen before. Now all you got to do is take these things that are already easy to figure out, you just got to give it time, and make a painting that explains your idea. And then that changes the game. That goes from like... Oh, when I look at, like, for instance, when I look at, uh, uh like, let's say it's, it's like a helmet or something like that. In my head, I'm imagining grabbing just like the techniques that I show in the tutorial, uh, a photo texture or something like that, overlaying it just to see what shapes will come out of it. And then I try to explain the design to myself. It's like, okay, what if the helmet isn't on the head? What if the helmet is actually on the chest and then it, it somehow extends up and like covers covers the head or something like that or what if the person doesn't have hair the hair is actually the helmet and 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 already right i'm sure right now you're thinking of like designs of like oh wow the hair can be all these things and it, and, and it can right your, your mind's just like oh my god that could be this whole thing and once you do that thing that liberates you you have to continue doing it as you explain the design once you do that, the rendering stuff, you do that tomorrow. You can figure it out tomorrow because there's literally a tutorial to tell you exactly how to do it. Yes, perfectly put. Um, and like exactly what you just said, as soon as you were mentioning all of that, that section of my brain was infecting other parts of my brain and just constantly thinking, yes, ideas, ideas, ideas. And yeah, yeah, I'm going to work on my portfolio right now. Yeah, right? Precisely. <laughs> and, and it's key as well because you tapped into... And just by mentioning that, and to myself, I'm sure for listeners as well, that that fun element of creativity, where like yeah. I'm sure, I'm sure, like for yourself, I'd love to get into that as well. Like your journey, even before you began as a professional, I'm sure that 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 creative thought process, that 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 stream of conscious, whatever it is that makes you be like this, was always there, right? For you, like always thinking about this could be this. What if, what if, what if, and then... No, it wasn't. Job. Interesting. For, for me, it was never there. For me, I thought I had to make really pretty pictures. And I spent all of my college career, years at ILM, focused on making something look realistic and really pretty. And I never focused on design. Like, that mm. took so long. Because eventually, you work inside of a box, right? When you work on a project. But I never allowed myself to... to think of things in in challenging ways that challenged the norm and really mm -hmm. broke out of that. I, I feel like I'm, I'm just like 99% of artists right now. And every student listening to this or every artist listening to this, they know what I'm talking about, where it's just like you're not looking really looking at the person's design. You're looking at how well they painted it. Oh, the brush strokes. Yeah, oh, what material sure. yeah, was that? Totally. What program totally. did you use, right? Yeah. Nah, I think that's, that's applicable to almost everything especially when you can see what your competitors what your peers are doing um yeah but that's another type i love to get into as well actually no we'll get into that first so like for example um i'm sure you got like hobbies as well like as a side hobby i like making beats a long long time ago oh, awesome i thought i was going to be this amazing beat maker never happened yeah. but okay, there's, there's the time i was like happily deluded um yeah. but at that same point just like as it is with art you mentioned brush strokes. Same with that as well. Like, for example, I did industrial design, car design through university. So it wasn't until I discovered concept art that I didn't realize how rigid I was. Like, I was more yeah. concerned about the draftsmanship, perfect line weight, trying mm -hmm. to make sure, like, I, the, the next thing I make has to be the greatest thing that's ever been made. And as a result, yeah. it's not. It's completely whack. Whereas yeah. discovering concept art was more for me because it was freeing. It was more like, yes, go wild go crazy tap into exactly what you just mentioned there um about solving problems and just focus purely on that but like yeah. you know, just to, to finish my my beat anecdote it was the same like i had my idols my heroes people whose music and the way they particularly producers like that's what like same with them um, art and anything visual i'm more mm -hmm. into 
the people who made the product as opposed to the finished product. So like, yeah. I love actors, I love all those people, but I'm more interested in directors, cinematographers, editors, yeah, you know, the, the, those composers. And like similar with music as a case of like, oh, that's the way they make their, their kick, drum, kick drum sound like that or the way they use their bass or their synths or whatever, really fixated on trying to emulate that because I feel like yeah. if I have that, I can make something cool when it was, mm -hmm. I did the same thing with art as well. And I used to explain that as well. Like it was a case of, yeah. oh, if I have, you know, Vitaly's modeling skills and form language, look what I could do um, with the same things when it's in fact, it's, it's almost, you realize when it clicks, it's like, oh no, it's not about that at all. Um, yeah. But like, you know, just to go back to your, your journey where you said that it was a case of like being in that box. Why do you think that was for you? Like, what what was your thought process at the time, or what was your journey like to make you head in that direction? You know, um, it was. I, I feel like I, you know, my journey led me to where I am now, and I'm happy with where I am. Sure. But I realized that I spent so many years really thinking about what other people would think. And, you know, we hear it all the time. You shouldn't care what other people think, blah, blah, blah. But it was about what I, how I felt about what other people would think. Not that that, mm -hmm. and other people would think whatever they're going to think, right? And there's this thing where you're really not getting the influence that you need. Because, I mean, you really do need like a professional and someone that, because art is vulnerable, man. It's so vulnerable, right? You're, you're really putting yourself out there when you post something, when you show something, when someone sees something like on your phone, your computer and asks what, what that is, you immediately are like, you immediately are like, Oh, um, you know, that I, I'm, that's like a work in progress. Like I'm not done with it. Like it, yeah, it's, yeah. it sucks, blah, blah, blah. You're downplaying it, but you know, it, I just spent so many years doing that and every now and then I'll just be honest with myself. It's like, Hey man, like, do you think this is a good design? Do you think so? Cause it's easy to be critical of others. So it's like, do you think this is cool? It's like, honestly, I think that you're being scared and you're playing it safe by doing this. I feel like you made this cause you think other people will like it. You didn't make it cause you think you'll like it. Mm -hmm. And it's like, uh, like a star Wars image, right? Everyone, and everyone has a star Wars image, yes. right? Because that's easy to like, cause yes, it's star yes. Wars. Right. But it's like, you know what? Why not make that lightsaber a ring instead of, instead of like a, a straight blade and, and why make Yoda look the way he does, you know, why not just make him completely different that's unrecognizable and people may not like it because yeah. it's a story that's going to make people like it. And it's just like, w once you get to that point where you can let yourself just be free and, and explore and know that you have the rendering skills that we all spend forever learning. Right. Uh, and you can execute, you can execute an idea that looks really pretty to look at also. Mm -hmm. Then you really start, impressing yourself because you're just like, yeah, like hey look at you <laughs> you made that <laughs> so so it's a lot of honest conversations with myself and and i think every time i work on something i try to be honest with myself it's like hey is that the best you can do yeah is that the most creative and it's just like no it's not but i'm tired blah blah it's like okay so that's where this whole process came from where it's just like where can you be the most free it's like what if i just do a symmetrical thing in photoshop like the armor character that's posted on Learn Squared right now that I did. And that's where I was really testing it out. I was like, let's test this theory. So first I started painting like shapes for the silhouette, right? Yeah. Uh, of that particular character. And I, and I was working on it. I was like, you know what? I'm getting burned out working on this. And it's just like, why are you getting burned out? I was like, cause it looks flat. And like, I don't know exactly what I'm doing. It's like, okay, what if I were to render it just in Photoshop, a BPR render simple one with like simple shapes and stuff like that. And, or, or just like a guy standing straight, right? Directly at camera. So I did that. And then I started adjusting the silhouette with paint. Then I started putting photo textures on top of it. Like I used to do with my 3D sculpts as a finishing mm -hmm. technique. But I was like, what if I just did that now? And I started to really get excited because when I would lay a shape on top of the forearm or the chest, I'm like, dude, that's a chest plate. Like I could just paint this and put little yeah. lights here and stuff like that. And I'll start seeing all these things. And then it became a game of 
uh, you know, like when I was doing that demo the other day, everyone was like, Hey, that looks like a caterpillar. And I'm just like, Ooh, caterpillar grenade. That's what that is. Right. I didn't think that. Right. And now it's just like you get really excited because once you put that first photo texture over your design or those shapes, you see something that nobody else sees. And you're excited because you're going to be the one who's going to bring you out for everyone to see. Mm -hmm. And you're so excited to show it off to everyone. And that's just the sketch. Imagine if you used your other 3D skills to block it out in 3D, play, put a light and everything, get it rendered super sexy. Then it's just like you're very impressed with yourself, right? Because mm -hmm. you're like, holy shit, I, I made that. I did that. I was going to ask you as well, like, was there a particular piece that really made you go back to the post we just mentioned is the armored piece there um and you, you mentioned something there that definitely resonates with myself like especially early on um i guess that the gap between graduating and then when i first broke into the industry there was a lot of that for me but i was just like pixel pushing and just thinking like oh when is this done what am i doing i oh, need to be like this needs to be like that and obviously looking back at myself and it's, it's very similar to your journey as well like there was an insecurity there but it's also like a lack of trust and even a lack of knowledge of yeah, my lack own of trust. process yeah. of mm -hmm. what I was doing. Um, mm -hmm. But prior to that, and yeah, similar journeys are like, you know, more so like trying to do things. Okay, if this is approved by others, then surely that means I'm doing the right thing. When a lot of the trendsetters, like you mentioned as well, and even like in other aspects as well, the ones that really stand out, they whether they wanted to or not couldn't help it but they didn't give a shit they're like this is how i have to be this is how it has to be and this is how i have to do it and i gotta run with it um and then obviously i'm sure there's others that their story's never been told and you never hear what they did but then there's those yeah. that really still stand out and will never be surpassed because they made their mark um who are your go-to creatives and artists that are your beacons, your North Stars that are like, whether it's just purely for inspiration, for motivation, or just like, you know, slow clap because of the amazing things they've done, who are your go-tos? You know, uh, like I've, had, I've answered this question before, and I feel like every time, like, I try to really dig. And at this point in my career, I really don't look at other people's work for the reasons that I used to, yes. even like with design things, I think, I think what I look for, and I don't always know their name. I, I look for images that remind me to design, to design first, because I, it would be something I've never seen before. And they, you could see the risks that they took. It's like, man, they made the arms really long on that character and it's like distorted or um, the armor doesn't really, it doesn't really make sense, but but they made it look like it makes sense, right? And those things remind me, it's just like, hey, take a risk. Who cares? Mm -hmm. Just take a risk, design it. Because at some point, you know, Halo really, you know, Master Chief wasn't the most popular design immediately, right? Like they had to go through iterations and the story made it into like a staple. Now everyone for years was making their version of Master Chief, right? Mm -hmm. Even Vitaly's images, like those were all fairly abstract, right? For a while. And then they blew up and they became more intricate, more detailed and mm -hmm. stuff like that. And he really got familiar with this process, but everyone starts somewhere. So I just try to find artists that remind me of that. So, um, and sometimes I'll stick with them, but not every artist sticks with that process. Yes, it's them yes. in that moment where they took that risk that day and they posted it or they shared it with the world. So I just try to collect images that are purely reminders because not everyone is always in that zone. Dude, that is music to my ears. Um, and like, yeah, I'm probably going to keep repeating this throughout the whole episode. A similar, similar experience and similar stage where... Yes, there's like artists you admire, the, the, the work is great. Um, but yeah, like equally, it's the same thing. It's like what is going to inspire and what is going to really like make you observe, make you want to pick apart that image as opposed to eye candy almost. Um, yeah. And like, do you think that's, there's a, maybe problem's a strong word, but do you think there's like a, 
that's a cycle that maybe needs to be broken at this stage we're in, like as, as creators, because you can look at our station wherever everything is and like, shouldn't everything technically stand out because everyone's working in their own voice or, you know, like, like why, I know we can't touch upon this as well, but like everything does look very similar. Everything is very similar yeah. because everyone's feeding into everyone else's thing and basically remaking the same thing. Um, yeah. But like, A, do you think that's a problem? Or do you think it's just part of the process and people will eventually um, snap out of it? Or do you think that is maybe something that people really need to start asking themselves and really consider why they're doing what they're doing in order to, like we've mentioned before, break free and really realize your creative voice? You know, I, th I think it's okay. Like, um, you know, David Bowie and other musicians, everyone, they, you know, they've said like the, the best artists are the ones that can hide their reference. Right. And it's okay to explore yourself through emulating someone else because you're emul emulating them because there's something about it, something about the way they deliver mm -hmm. their process, yeah, yeah. whatever it is that you're trying to capture for yourself. Right. And you're only going to capture a small percentage of it. Right. Cause there's like 10 other artists that you love and you'll do the same thing with them. Mm -hmm. That's how I, I feel like that's really how you develop your own look and your own voice. Like friends have told me like they recognize my paintings, but I don't recognize them. I'm like, oh, how do you recognize them? They're just like, yeah, you do. Like you have this look. And I'm like, do I? Do I have a look? Interesting. And and it just develops. So yeah, like have fun, you know. Uh like I've I've done like my paintings that are like Drew Struzan or I've tried being an Ian McKaig or a Carlos Fuente and those all influence to the decisions I make when I'm like finishing a painting or something like that. Cause I, I really practice their techniques. Right. And so I don't think there's anything wrong with it, but sure. just remember to take the time to be honest with yourself when you sit down to sketch and be like, Hey, today I'm going to sketch. It's probably going to suck. This is probably going to be like the dumbest sketch ever. But my goal today is to follow this tutorial and make a dagger. It's like, okay, I did the silhouette. And maybe that's all the gas you have for that day. And it's like, all right, take a break. Come back, come back later. So, like, okay, you have that. All right, let's grab photo textures like the tutorial says. It's like, all right, let's do that. It's like, all right, my goal today is to finish a dagger. It's like, okay, that's your goal. So whatever you got to do to finish it, finish it and the more you do that you get to a point you get to a point where you start to realize certain things about yourself you're like you know to get to this result at the end that i'm happy with now i actually don't need to do these other things that i was mm -hmm. spending so much time on so you start cutting things out and then you start realizing that like in like during the demo the other day uh you know nick was saying he's like oh you're, you're creating a lot really fast and for me, I was just like, oh my God, I'm taking so long. Like I'm just taking, because <laughs> I was like nervous, you know, it's yeah, live. Yeah. I'm like, oh, I hope I don't mess this up and no one's going to watch the tutorial. Right. Um, but I'm thinking about so many things, but I'm just grabbing photo textures just to, just to test out ideas. Um, because I've gone through the process myself so many times on mm -hmm. a daily basis and, uh, just having that that trust in yourself, you know, you, you mentioned trust earlier, trusting yourself to not be mad at yourself, not to doubt yourself, but to know it's a process and, and you'll get there. But your goal is to finish something mm -hmm. or whatever your goal is for that day. And like early on in your journey, especially when you started working, obviously you explained that your approach to the way you made art was very different as it is now. Um, yeah. Do you also find that like the way you wanted to create back then like, did you add extra things in a way that was maybe destructive to the creative process um, just to, I guess, impress the art director or just make a good impression? But then you obviously looking back, you found out that actually, no, that was actually doing the opposite to, yeah. to, you know, to yeah. what you were actually aiming Quite for. Quite a bit. Quite a bit. That was my jam. Um, <laughs> and it still is sometimes too. Like you think, okay. hey, if I, if I just render this out a particular way, if I make it look you know, pretty, like I know these other guys make it, then uh, they'll like it because I feel like that. And you know, same yeah, thing with yeah, posting yeah. your own art. It's like, I think that's the right answer. But then, you know, like, I, like I'll, I'll help out like young artists and I'll look at their work and I can tell what they're doing because, mm -hmm. you know, I'm experienced. So it's just like, 
I know you're trying to be like an Anthony Jones or something like mm -hmm. that, or I know you're trying to do that. You're defaulting to these habits that yes, you yes, have. Yes, yes. It's like design it first. Let's look at the design and then execute it. And then so that way, rather than you making a pretty painting and I check in with you like three days later and I look at it, I'm like, did you really spend like three days making this like, did you really spend three days like posing a hand for this character, trying to get it like to look beautiful? I'm like, are you a draftsman? No. Are you this uh, beautiful illust illustrator person? They're like, no. I'm like, why did you spend three days on this hand? It's like, well, because I thought it'd be cheating if I if I took a photo of my hand yeah, or yeah, if I yeah. grabbed if I had a three D hand and posed it and lit it. It's just like, you know, if if you would just design and then check in with me, right? Then we can move along faster. But now we lost three days. Mm -hmm. Um, so, or I lost three days and it's just like, I have to go back and figure out what I did wrong. But being so naive at that time, I really didn't realize it was the design. Like the, my art directors would be like, do this, do this, do this, do this. And I would, and it would get to a point where they pretty much did the painting. I yeah, did yeah, yeah. Yeah. because I skipped all of the design process. Like what, what's, what's the goal of this image that we're looking at. What, what's the point of designing this blade? What, what am I supposed to feel? Who's this for? Right. Mm -hmm. Those questions weren't answered. It was just me trying to make a pretty blade. Mm. And, um, yeah. And it took years for me to realize it's like, dude, I just, I wasn't being a designer. I was trying to be someone who made really pretty paintings. Yeah. Yeah. That yeah. design is like, the, I like to think of it obviously because it's when you say, obviously it's, it's you get it straight away. Because you always mm -hmm. think of like something that works and that's a good design. Everyone has their own opinion of what a good design is and what's yeah. considered a good yeah. design. Um, but equally, like it's very, like, you can't hold it, if that mm -hmm. makes sense. Like it's, I liken it to gravity, like it's this unifying force, but you can never really hold it or wield it. You can just yeah. represent it or capture it in a certain way, like a snapshot. Um, but equally, and I think the way you approach your workflow in the course as well, and when I was watching it and going through it, it was almost every single second, every single stage of the course from beginning to the end is almost like a constant, like, it is just purely about design. Like it's, yeah. okay, why am I doing this? It's like, you're openly questioning yourself, but not in a negative way. It is literally like, oh, do we need to do this? Do we need to like add this in there do we need to add too much salt maybe take some pepper out or whatever you know all that kind of yeah. stuff yeah and being so, honest until it feels yeah right, yeah it's just like hey this is whack i gotta like <laughs> yeah. re redo this part right yeah and, and i show that um and I, I think you know like even when i demoed the other day i, I really didn't want to practice a demo or anything like that mm -hmm. because i just want people to see what it's like in the process it's just like hey this thing isn't working out like i need to i need to go back i need to start over I need, I, I forgot to do this mm -hmm. um, because still just constant reminders, just constantly need to remind myself. Yeah. Yeah. And I think like for myself, I need to see as a creative and just the way my brain works, like I need to see people, um, like I need to see them stumble. I need to see the stumbling block. I need to stumble myself. I need to recognize yeah. when I'm yeah. stumbling because I realized for a big chunk of my creative, my creative career, I didn't realize I was stumbling. And I was creating whilst I was stumbling until I actually stood up. I was thinking, oh, that's why I've got all these bruises and stuff. Um, yeah, yeah. But yeah, that's why I like, like a lot of behind the scenes stuff because you see these masterpieces that have been created and how much doubt, how much back and forth, how much iteration, how many accidents occur before this thing that you consider a masterpiece is made. And when you see a masterpiece, you just see this, well, a masterpiece is, I guess, the closest thing to perfection. And you just see this perfect yeah. thing when in fact so much what you could define as negative energy goes mm -hmm. into this. Um, so yeah, like it's, it's very important. And I think and it's clear, like it's not even, I guess if anyone wants to look for a perfect hack, just look at that, look for the way people stumble and get back up. Uh, look at the yeah. way people, you know, like fail and rectify that mistake and not repeat it. Yeah. You know, I think um, that, like my intention with the tutorial is to really, really dissect and get into this part of us that really struggles with our portfolios or creating a design. And it's like, you know, I, I get self-conscious when I'm doing this part or like, hey, I slow down during this part. And that's why it's just like, hey, 
I, I know that I'm like slowing down on this like design that I'm showing you guys right now. Yeah, I'm gonna duplicate yeah, yeah. it over and I'm gonna show you guys how I address that particular issue. And then I really that I really wanted to I, I think it's because I've helped and I've taught for so long that I really wanted to bring up the things that always come up when I teach people. It's just like, hey, what do you do when this happens? What do you do when this happens? How do you know when something's finished? Um, how far should I take this? What and and you know, you guys were really great um when you were talking about like, hey, can we because because I went over like the reference a little bit that I grabbed. That's like, can, can we specifically go over why you grab certain photo textures for this process? And like, can you break that down? And I thought I broke it down, but it's like, okay, you guys want to get into the nitty gritty mm -hmm. of why it's like these. I'm like, which is really good because I remember watching tutorials when I was younger. You know, the artists would always skip the thing that you really wanted to see. And it's like, like, it's just like, okay, so I just skipped and I'm like here now. She's like, whoa, whoa, wait, I bought this tutorial because I wanted to see exactly how yeah, you did yeah, yeah. that. <laughs> um, so I think, and you know, it, it's been like several months working on this and, and I think it's well worth it because you guys really made sure we covered all like the little tiny things about my process. And, you know, and I showed uh, a young artist um, the uh, parts of the tutorial that I had mm -hmm. done that covered things. And he was like, hey, you know, you, your photo, the way you use Photoshop, you, I actually don't know, like, some of these tools that you're using. Like, you use them pretty quickly. It would be nice to know exactly what you're doing. So that's why we made the video mm -hmm. about how I use Photoshop and going over like some basics of Photoshop and exactly the tools I use and why I use them. Um, yeah, it, it turned, I, I thought that was like an amazing video just because I was, I never would have thought to have included that because I just assume people know these things, these tricks that I do in Photoshop mm -hmm. to get things to work faster. And, uh, yeah, so I mean, I really, I really hope. It helps like young artists and, and even experienced artists that are in a rut, you know, to, to break out of it. I might watch it too, just to remind myself. <laughs> well, I think that's a really cool thing about the course as well, because it's, it's repetitive. Like it's yeah. um, like a, an arcade game, like Tetris almost, like there's no yeah. end. You can keep doing it. You can make a better score. You, and it's also like, to use that Tetris example, you don't know what blocks are coming. So you can have, you can be as fast as you can possibly be. Yeah, and like with reference, like, and the way you, I love the way you explore through looking at the reference, and even when you pick a reference whilst chopping it up and going through it, you find something else in there as well. And yeah, it's, it's not it's, what you think you're going to so find cool. at all, right? So cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, I think, I think one of my favorite parts that's in the trailer is when I use the that those door handles to create the detail for the blade for the dagger. Cause like I, it looked like a cool image. I was like, I don't know how I'm going to use this, but I was like, oh, this makes the blade look like super cool, but it's a door handle of fish. <laughs> like yeah, so that, random. It's, it's amazing. And it's like, um, it is like clay, like clay is basically mud is from the ground, but yeah. give it enough time. You can fashion into anything amazing. And it's the same way. Like it's almost, I mean, the photos, you can take your own photos. You can obviously get the photo packs and whatnot. Um, and you can do anything like that's the beauty of creativity and creating and design as well. Like, yeah. yes, there's so many things that have been made, uh, but the combinations are infinite. Like you can come up with anything. And Yeah. You know, I didn't realize how much I, you know, when we did the layout of all the weapons that I designed, I didn't realize that I designed so many for the tutorial. Like in yeah. my head, I was like, oh, I, I know there's an ax and like a dagger. But then when I saw them all laid out, I was like, wow, <laughs> just because, yeah, you can, you know, just duplicating over and it's never my intention to do two or three designs it's mm -hmm. just like oh what if what if i use this photo texture on this on this instead of the other one then that's mm -hmm. like two options and what if i use it differently and that's a third option fourth option fifth option and you end up creating so much uh content for your portfolio that you, you never even realized that you were making multiple designs you were just trying to make something look cool and you yeah, end up, yeah. you know you end up making like five or six things and you had fun doing it. Mm -hmm. And yeah. it's it's um, super productive as well. Like even specifically, like obviously, you know, when you work with clients, the ideation, as you mentioned before, is super key. Getting your ideas as quick as possible. Although that shouldn't be your goal just purely for speed. It is something that if you can do that, it just helps you, helps your clients and you can yeah. solve things super quick as well. And the way you approach things, like 
that one axe, that one silhouette, that one shape, even that one. So technically, like the way you work and the way you uh, made the course is you can have one texture, one silhouette, and almost spend the rest of your day coming up with as many variations as you want, which again, yeah. helps you because you're not shifting from software to render engine to the different windows. You're just in that one place and you got everything yeah. you need to to, to go wild. Yeah. And, and I love that. And I think, you know, just to add on to everything is I really wanted to make sure that people didn't walk away from this tutorial, just making daggers the whole time. Like the same, cause I used to do that when I was young as I would watch tutorial and all I could do was literally what I saw in the tutorial yeah, yeah, or a variation yeah. of that. I could never explore myself or my own imagination cause I was too scared. So that's why I included the axe because it's asymmetrical and it's a totally, it feels differently when you're working on it, right? That's why we did that alien blaster and the shotgun. Um, just because, you know, and I think that was a great suggestion by you guys because it really shows, yeah, you can apply this method to anything. It really is just about letting yourself explore and have fun because mm -hmm. we all get stuck, right? We all watch those tutorials. We're like, how'd you come up with that? Yes. And they show us the process. But it's not really, uh, I, I feel like I never had the tools because, you know, everyone says the same thing and it's not bad, but it's just like, yeah, look at reference, look at reference. And it's like, but how do I use it? <laughs> oh, dude, like totally like, even like, I think gathering reference can get <laughs> super addictive. Like you get really lost, yeah. in it, especially if it's let's say a great textbook with loads of images of a particular subject matter, like you can just get lost and gathering this and thinking, oh, I need this or that, that section is going to be great. And by the end of it, you wasted, I guess it's all subjective whether you think it's wasted or not, but you spent a lot of time gathering this. And I believe, and this is something I've learned the hard way as well. Like mm -hmm. there is an art form to knowing what to select and going back to the music analogy, like when you've got the, all the instruments of the world available to you, how yeah. do you know which ones to use in your composition? And you need to like have a, I guess like a plan in advance or a vision in advance yeah. and then kind of let that fall into place. Um, do you ever get lost in references and gathering stuff as well? I can. So what I do is I use Pinterest a lot. Pinterest is like my main thing. And yeah. you know, and I, I cover how I gather reference, but mm -hmm. what I do is I, so number one, when I name a board on my Pinterest, for instance, I have a board called Dagger, but inside of that are like lamps, uh, uh, vases, um, various things that are like have unique shapes, but the folder is called Dagger. But it's because I like to remind, my, I, I don't want to force myself to view something a particular way, right? So it's just like Dagger. When I look at that lamp or, or that vase, I'm like, that is a Dagger. Mm -hmm. how, how can that be a dagger? First thing is like, oh, the detail could like, you know, that could be the handle or something like that. It's like, no, look into the pattern, look into the little sliver that you think looks cool in that photo. It's like, that could be the edge of the dagger. It's like, how could that be the edge of the dagger? It's like, well, show me, try it. Like, let's see what we can do. So I do that. And when I gather lighting reference, you know, it's like, okay, here's this you know, building in this misty environment, stuff like that. I'm just like, what if instead of a building that was like some spaceship landing or that that's like a creature walking through, or maybe it's just like this giant blade, but why is there a giant blade there? And it's just like, I don't know. Let's answer the question. Yes, yes. Let's, let's figure that out. Cause I've never seen that before. So that's what I do when I gather references, like come up with like little stories of, for that reference. And I end up saving it. Cause I'm like, that would be a cool little idea to explore in the future. Right. It's like, how do I make that blade? That's the size of a building. How do I explain that? That's not obvious. P yeah. Precisely. Knows? And like, when I saw you do that in the course, I was like, yes, this is like, this guy's preaching to my creative soul because that's like the exploration phase. Like that is for me, the ideation phase exploration is just like amazing. Like if there was no such thing as this industry, I would mm -hmm. still be doing it in a random way. Just some crazy guy sitting on a park bench somewhere, just coming up with these random things because yeah. there's just something like it just, it definitely that part of my brain wants to be stimulated with that. Um, yeah. And yeah, like 
I'm sure we've all had those projects as well where you get given a reference board and it's so, I'm going to say bland because it's so like, hey, we're going to design a tree. Here's loads of pictures of bark, which which has a has a purpose, mm-hmm. but yeah. it's so like, you could say creatively sterile. But like mm-hmm. you said, like, hey, we've got, you know, this picture of um an ornate chandelier or, yeah. you know, like um a sword hilt, but we want to turn that into a tree. Let's go. Then it's like, yes, let's, let's figure yeah, all these yeah, things yeah. out. And, you know, it's like stoking that creativity through almost being deliberate with gathering your reference or what you're looking at, what you're feeding your creative brain with. Like that's almost like a little cheat code in itself before you even start it designing is, something, yeah. right? Because you're excited because you're like, no one sees what I yes, see right now yes, in, this, yes, yes. in this reference. So you want to capture it. And, you know, I, I get reference boards all the time. And I know, I think what's important for me is to understand what the intention is from them. Sure. Yes, yes. But they're hiring for your creativity. Yes. And I think some there's definitely days, there's been plenty of days where I take that literally and I'm like, I have to use this reference and I have to follow this. Yeah, and yeah. understanding that it's just like, hey, this is just a rough suggestion of what we want. If someone really wants literally what they're showing you, then they'll tell you. So uh, that's why it's really important to explore your creativity and stay loyal to it. Mm -hmm. Always stay loyal to it and explore. And with your process as well, like, because am I correct in assuming that the way you create in the course, that's pretty much your go-to process with anything you do now for your clients, for your personal projects? Yeah, you know, once it once it started to work for me, I was like, wait, I can like, I can do anything with this. And I saw so I was like, okay, if I need to design a spaceship, I could just design it from the top down using the symmetry thing. And I would like in my head as I'm like using photo reference and stuff like that, I know I apply the same thing. It's like, I need to know where the thrusters are. I need to know where the fuselage is, where it's pointing. So I make that silhouette and I, when I'm grabbing photo textures, I make sure those things make sense. And it's just like, Hey, I, I get it now. Like I get it. And I start doing it with creatures. I started doing, it, uh, you know, like I said, props and, um, everything I could think of. I'm like, I could really use this method for anything. So now before I start anything, I will take the time to like spend a day doing a day or two like doing like a bunch of sketches for it and i don't always show the client like the sketches like sometimes they want to see it more finished Mm -hmm. so um or uh i'll use that as a conversation piece with my with the lead lead concept artists or their art directors before we show anyone it's like Mm -hmm. hey this is where i'm thinking about going look at it and it looks really pretty right because i'm showing i and you know i show you my process of how to light it a little bit so it Mm -hmm. looks pretty and they know your intention and then, uh, and I just take it further from there. But yeah, I use it. I use it for everything because the hardest thing is having an idea. And I, I'm sure we've all been there when you're in 3D and you're working. There comes a point where you you're really not sure what to do anymore, and you kind of slow down. Like a good example is I remember I was taking this uh, workshop uh, with uh, a designer, and he. Uh, I had to sculpt out a creature, right? I drew out the creature and I sculpted it as many years ago. I sculpted it out uh, really quickly, really quickly, but the hands weren't sculpted. So I spent two days working on the hands. So he walks up to me, he sits next to me. He's just like, he, he was like, okay, you need to push your design, blah, blah. He was showing me all that because I was still learning. He's like, where are the hands? I was like, oh, I'm still working on them. He's like, you want to know why you haven't made the hands yet? I'm like, why? He's like, because you don't know what they look like. Mm-hmm. So he grabbed my sketchbook and gave it to me. He's like, design the hands. He's like, how can you how can you make something if you don't know what it looks like? Right? And so that's where like the reference and everything else and why it's really important to sketch out, but not just sketch out, like really answer questions. And that's mm-hmm. why this tutorial is a big deal for me. It's because it's like the handle of the blade. Did you really figure out the handle of the blade? Like imagine building it in 3D. Are all the questions answered? And if it's like, yes, then it's like, okay, move on. But if you're designing the blade and you realize in 3D, you didn't actually do anything with the blade itself. It's just like, you should take some time to solve that now. Because if you're going to do it in 3D, it's going to take you 10 times longer to build it in 3D. And it's probably not going to look good Mm -hmm. because you're going to be so precious with it. So, yeah. Yeah, now there's... um... 
the way again like it's, it's interesting what it's interesting and it's almost profound in a way where if you are like stuck in a creative rut or you're having a creative problem or you like you know a creative block even the solution is always something simple it's never yeah. anything complicated to solve a creative problem it's mm-hmm. it's we've made the we are the complicated aspect of that particular problem um, like yeah. you mentioned with the hands and then it's almost like go back almost and i think we've all been there i still do it sometimes where i'm thinking i know i should restart this because it's going to be better but mm-hmm. you think that no it's like a quicker if i keep pushing this this thing that i know is not going to really solve um you got to talk yeah. about that sometimes but yeah the simple yeah. answer is always a one and again i think one way to sum up the workflow that you teach is simplicity um and that's not a word to be taken lightly and not to have any mm-hmm. value because yeah. like if you think about anything like if you can add something and this is what i personally look at with anything when we see like this is a personal greedy artist kind of look like any course that yeah. we have i always think mm-hmm. how can i utilize this manipulate this to what i need it for and mm-hmm. you know like it's almost like talking about weapons and attachment on a weapon like i think this workflow really you can attach to any particular discipline because as you show even with your workflow and your work in general like you look at your art station look at your portfolio there's everything in there it's not just daggers it's not just um creatures it's the whole lot but it's all combined by this workflow but even then it doesn't look the same although yes as you mentioned with your um, your friends and everything they say it looks like your style like you can definitely see your style you can definitely see that oh yeah that's like you can tell like, this is obviously my analysis um you can tell like you have this appreciation for light and the way you want to light mm-hmm. things and that shows because there's that kind of like signature where you want to capture that and obviously yeah. it can manifest in different ways but mm-hmm. everything is different like yeah. it, it, and obviously because there's client work in there it belongs in different universes um so like for a lot of people that is also a big thing as well like there's a debate about style me personally i think style should be something that you should never concern yourself with it happens it happens like an accent the way you walk the way you breathe the way you sound mm-hmm. it just happens you should never really like yeah try and manipulate that unless you want to um unless it's going to benefit you in any way like it is what it is just focus on what's yeah. what you can control um but equally there's also that i guess school of thought or that desire where you think okay how can i really be flexible for my clients for my projects and really be able to make something that's different each time that mm-hmm. feels different that has its own voice as opposed to my own thing like take james cameron the the director for example you got mm-hmm. aliens you've got abyss you've got titanic you got avatar they're, yeah. they're, they're, they're his flair but they're very different subject matters most of them um yeah. but similar threads as well so long-winded <laughs> thing out of the way um no, good, yeah like um how do you f- tackle keeping things different keeping things separate whilst also coming from the same workflow like for some people that might think like that's impossible you must be doing some some adjustments here and there like how is it possible to have this same workflow but be able to kick out all these unique different results each time yeah you know um so a couple answers here so first thing is um you know i mentioned this tutorial is there are certain rules you have to follow about design so if you are creating a dagger it's like okay so in this story someone needs to be able to hold it with one hand it's like we got that there needs to be a certain length blade or whatever that represents you know a dagger and it's just like okay we know a dagger is not going to be super long it has to be fairly short but that's how we know daggers to be it's like okay got the handle blah blah does it have like a little hilt you know something something to put the dagger in it's like okay i gotta design that too so those are the rules is that you have to be able to handle handle it a certain way and maybe you have to pull it out a certain way where is it on the character is it on their belt do they have is it a crazy uh, game where they have it on their shoulder or their back or their chest whatever it is their leg right answer those questions now you make your silhouettes and just go crazy don't worry about don't worry too much about those rules but keep them in mind that someone has to hold it and it needs to come out of like a holster but they didn't say like this blade is a single blade 
They didn't say it can't have like three small blades creating one blade coming out, right? Those are things you can play with because it's just like, well, technically you can still operate it the same way, right? So it's just like, go crazy. Just make sure you're following those rules. And at the very end, review your design and just ask yourself like, okay, this handle is like a grip handle and the blades coming out of like the middle of your hand. It's like, or the middle of your knuckles. It's like, okay, they, you can have that as an option, but it seems like they really wanted something that you would grip like with a okay. fist. Um, and that's how, that's the functionality of it. But you can have it in as an option or check with the art director and you may need to tweak some things. You may need to make the handle a little bit longer or something like that, or make the blade a little bit longer. And those are all tweaks. Um, and so, yeah, that's a reality, but, but it's okay. The, the whole thing is that you're pushing what, when you look at a design, you ask yourself, have I seen this before? And chances are you're going to be like, nope, never seen it. Especially if you use this process, you're like, never seen that before. Uh, does this make sense when you look at it? It's like, yeah, it makes sense. Okay, cool. This is clearly a dagger. It's like, okay, all those things are checked off. I know it's a unique design. Show it to the team. We'll take it further. In terms of style, let's say you're working on an Overwatch game or, or something that's super stylized. Use the same process, but it's very important. And, you know, even with the more realistic stuff is have reference of what your final result should look like. Mm -hmm. So if it's like super graphic and stylized, have that reference up. It's not reference for a design. It's reference for its simplicity, its complexity, what you're going to see in the game. So you want to stay in that realm because it's also, a, a, for me, my goal is to deliver something that lets everyone visualize it in the game or the movie already. So that way they, they have less work to do, mm -hmm. right? If I give them a 2D, like there's been projects where they ask for sketches all the time, right? Sometimes drawings too. Mm -hmm. They won't, they won't make up their mind. Like on, uh, you know, when I was working on a quiet place, um, it was mostly sketches they were asking for from the team. And, you know, Carl Lindbergh was designing, he really designed the heck out of that creature and it looked so awesome. And I was brought on to design the head, right? So it got to a point where it's just like, you know, I feel like they don't respond. I feel like some of these people don't respond to sketches, like anything too loose. So I need to make this look more realistic. Mm -hmm. And so, so I took some extra time, made it look realistic, delivered it. Then suddenly it got approved. And it's just right, like, okay, right, right, right. I understand this client. So when I, when I, so when I started doing these like, uh, sketches in Photoshop, pe people still message me. They're like, why do you call this a sketch? It looks finished. Like, why do you call it a sketch? Mm -hmm. It's because there are a lot of an unanswered questions, right? What, like, are there going to be scratches on the metal? Like, what does it look like in a person's hand? Like, how much more detail do I need to add? These things are blurry. Like, there's so many questions that need to be answered, right? But if you follow the style guide and you deliver something that looks like the final results, they can visualize it a lot sooner, give you notes, and they can just move into production a lot faster mm. rather than just like worrying about delivering like a 2D sketch. Another long-winded answer, but <laughs> those, those that's are that. things yeah. to look yeah, uh, yeah. And I think that's super interesting as well, like the point you just made about, about clients because like you mentioned before, like clients are different, projects are different, and everybody responds to information and solutions in different ways. Like yeah. someone needs to, I worked in customer services for a long time in sales. Some mm -hmm. people just want the bare minimum and they're happy to make mm -hmm. a decision. Others yeah. would want as much information as possible, almost too much to inform the decision. And mm -hmm. you nailed it. Like you got to be prepared to go that distance if you need to, or be prepared to give what you need. Um, but I think it's also key as well, like you were able to, without them even realizing they needed to have that particular presentation style, you mm -hmm. kind of saw it. How have you managed to nurture that type of, so is that like just inherently part of your personality? Is that something you've kind of like machined into your creative process and your the way you handle with clients um, over the years? You know, it's something that, you it, it definitely takes experience to know when to do those things um i think a majority like 90 percent of the time i deliver the way the client wants me to deliver to deliver but 
Um, and then sometimes I'll, I'll try different ways of delivering just to see, because if they're not liking a lot of what I'm delivering, it's like, I mean, that happened not too long ago with a different project. I was delivering stuff in more of a sketchy presentation, like the, the way I was delivering, uh, the way I deliver in this tutorial. And it was going okay, but there, there were questions and uh, critiques from them that I felt like could really only be answered in more of a 3D space. Mm -hmm. So I started taking those sketches and, and blocking them out in 3D and then uh, painting on top of them from, like while looking at the sketch, right? And that got better results uh, from this particular client. But not all clients know exactly what they need to, to, to see in order to make a decision. So a lot of it is really paying attention to the client and what they say, how they respond, are they giving you feedback? Are they, do they sound very unsure about what's right and what's wrong? Because like in school, uh, in a lot of schools, you know, I, I was taught to like do a page of like 50 silhouettes. It's like, okay, you know, when, when you go buy an iPhone, it's very hard to buy an iPhone because it's like, okay, what do I have? 16 gig, 128, uh, 300 something, yeah. blue, purple, yellow, green, silver, black, you know, do I want this? Do I want metal? Do I want plastic? And it's just like, now you have, you have 50 options and it's just yes. like now, so you're going up to someone who's not used to seeing drawings, and sketches, and you're asking them to choose out of 50 and it's like, okay. You, you may not want to put them, they may want that and that's okay. That's your job to deliver that. But part of me tries to really keep that number, you know, after so much experience, it's like, okay, I'll, I'll deliver a certain quality, but a certain amount. So that way they have less to pick from. And then when I show them the first set of images, you know, that first week, you really learn a lot about the client and what they respond to. And she's like, yeah, they really respond to this style of delivery. Mm -hmm. And, uh, they really prefer things desaturated and like gray and black and white. It's like, okay, mm -hmm. now I know that for the future. So I think people pick up on it naturally, sure. but, um, like, I, like on a quiet place or whatever, that was, that was just straight up risk. <laughs> I was like, I'm gonna shoot my shot. Cause yeah, I feel like man. this is the answer. Yeah. <laughs> and do you take, well, obviously you took a risk there, but what's your opinion on risks? Obviously, like, I'm sure there've been situations where the risk hasn't paid off. But that, does that ever does a discourage you from taking risks again? Or are you someone who would always kind of take that risk, especially if you believe that it's going to elevate what you're trying to elevate? No, like on a job, I won't take too many risks because uh, for, for my, my opinion is that I want to be as professional as possible. I want to deliver what the client asked for. Cause that's what you're getting. That's literally what you're getting paid mm -hmm. for is to, to deliver what they asked for. Um, if I start deviating from that and they keep having to correct me, that's unprofessional. Right. And, uh, it's, it's costing time and money and it's affecting your, your, um, uh, reputation. So, um, every now and then I, the only risk I'll take is like, I'm going to add a bit more polish to this, right. And see how they see it. And then I've been slapped on the wrist before. They're just like, Hey, don't refine things too much. Even, even the delivery of the sketches I just showed you, some people, some series would be like, Hey, this is too much. Yeah. Like, yeah. this is like way too refined, even though it won't take me as much time. Right. Um, it'll take the same amount of time I feel like. And, uh, but it puts the client in this, it can put the client in a position where they feel pressure to make a decision because everything's refined, but it's like, no, that's just how it works. So I have to modify the way I deliver and simplify it a little sooner, keep it a mm -hmm. little more loose intentionally. So that way they don't feel pressured. And, um, it's always that balance where, um, I really don't want to take risks, but if I feel like things are not moving forward, yeah, yeah, yeah. May, maybe if I can deliver something in the same window of time and I'm not taking extra time, if I'm adding a little bit more polish and it gets them to be, gets them to see the idea the way they, they wanted to see it. And it's like, great. I'm glad that worked out. But if it doesn't, and it's just like, okay, like they don't, they don't like that. Try it a different way. And sometimes spend like a month doing that. You know, there's been plenty of projects where it's just like spending months trying to figure out what it is that they like to look at. Yeah. Sometimes there's like six people reviewing your art. Yes. Um, yeah. And in that sense, like when, just like, uh, I guess, and there's an asterisk with all these things because it all varies from project to project. There's a lot of, like you mentioned, there could be multiple people involved. And 
just like the iPhone example, I think is perfect when you're dealing with other human beings. Um, there's many different personalities, different combinations of personalities, mm-hmm. and they all impact decision making. However, yeah. there are like certain standards that are consistent with, I guess, most projects, which can always, 99.9% of the time, will always be helpful. So like, and I've made this mistake very early on, where I've just yeah. like thrown a lot of iterations to a client thinking volume is key. Look, I can do yeah. all these things. This is going to be great for you. And it's overkill. So like, what do you think is like, from your experience, because again, with the workflow, like you can literally spend a good few hours, maybe even less, come up with many, many options. Is there like a golden number for you um, of options you should present? Um, mm. And obviously, again, back on the course, there's a great section in the course where you show how to present and how to label your things correctly yeah. to communicate. Um, yeah. But yeah, like just like, I guess, starting with the number of ideas you should give like do you have like a little gold number or a little code of conduct that you go through when you deliver things i feel like three ideas is really good but i make sure and, and i talk about this in the tutorial and you can see in the final images too i make sure i deliver three images three ideas that are in the same realm in terms of design but each each one is like very different than the other mm-hmm. Because my goal isn't to overwhelm them with anything. My goal is to uh, find a direction. So if they like, so my goal isn't for them to really pick a design. Mm -hmm. My goal is to be like, hey, you know that that skull that you made? It's not really a skull. It's like something else, but like it looks interesting. We like that. It's like, okay, that's a success. That is success. It's like, hey, we also like the shape of this. We don't necessarily like the blade, but... We kind of like the shape. It's like, okay, they like the skull. They like this because it looks like it's only three designs, but there's so much information in each of them that's unique to them. If we could Frankenstein a design, then that would be great. And sometimes they're just like, yeah, we don't like any of these cute. And, but it also tells them what they, it also tells you what they don't like. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So it's just like, and and then maybe in that moment, they'll be like, could you do something like from like, Oh, you know, we saw this like like dragon glass from like Game of Thrones, and it's like I never would have thought of changing from a metal blade to like dragon glass, right? Never would have thought of black glass, mm-hmm. but now I know that from doing these iterations, I didn't, I had no, they probably didn't even know it was an option until they saw these options in context. So now we're just answering questions all day. If I bombard them with like fifty silhouettes then it then it changes right it's just like yeah we like these silhouettes it's like okay so what's the next step yes i don't know they yes, don't yes, really yes. know they're yeah. asking you and it's just like okay so am i just going to refine like 20 silhouettes which one do i pick in the ask, oh which ones are your favorites we like these eight yeah yeah but like, okay these other ones are cool too but maybe we don't even it's like okay so am i going to spend like the next couple of days refining eight blades and imagine how burned out you'll be from refining yes. each one of those, especially without the method I'm showing you, and you're you're manually doing it, at least six of them are not going to look good because all your energy is going to go into one or two of them. So it's managing your time, their time, your uh, emotions, your drive, um, and your the time management is really hard because you're like, okay, eight blades. How long does one blade take me to take? Do I have any ideas? How am I going to do these? How am I going to present them? right? Is it going to be finished? Is it going to just be like a little painted, right? And it, it it creates so much complexity that you end up really digging yourself a hole. So that's why I try to, try to deliver three or, or four designs, usually three, make them look very, very nice, present them really well, um, three different options, and let's answer some questions. And as a professional, in my head, I'm just like, okay, they don't like this. They like this. They want this. They yeah. mentioned this movie. They mentioned this game. So I'm going to Google Google the hell out of those. Create, create a, a pure ref folder with all that reference, right? And then make sure that I stay loyal to my design process. But I'm going to make sure it feels like this reference that they mentioned. So mm-hmm. when they look at it, they're like, that's it. That's the one. And another thing that I enjoy about what you've showcased and what you've taught is it's useful for anyone of any level. Obviously beginners, I think it's great for them because when I was starting out 
I wish I had something like this at the very beginning, specifically because I feel it would have grounded me better than the yeah. nomadic journey I was on, where I was like bouncing from tutorial to tutorial, making up my own curriculum without an informed decision, which took me a few yeah. years to kind of come out with. Like this would have been perfect. However, yeah. fast forward till today, and also knowing again what I was mentioning before, like it's important for me to know what's happening behind the scenes. Like, for example, with I have a privilege working for Learn Squared, I do get to see that. But as the yeah. courses are being made and, you know, like um see who the instructors are, what they do, all that kind of stuff. Um knowing that you are capable and you do create in 3D as well. Because you can take these designs and you can translate them into 3D. Mm -hmm. And also the way you make your designs in this 2D way um is because they have that thinking in mind of like okay this could be made this will be made and most likely mm -hmm. with the industry and the companies you work for it is going to be built in a 3d capacity in some way mm -hmm. or form either as a physical prop or as something digitally that will have to be seen multiple angles mm -hmm. so you know how that okay this design is going to translate into 3d um and i'm sure you've had that journey early on in your career where something in 2D didn't really translate well into 3D and maybe All vice the time. versa as well. Yeah. Um, and equally, I think working in 2D first is great before going to 3D because you can start off in 3D and it also looks sterile if you start seeing things in 3D yeah. before 2D yeah. as well. Yeah. Um, which I think is why Lord of the Rings works so well because they literally had two iconic artists who almost did things exclusively in pen and pencil. Um, mm. And then it became what it became. So for me, that gives me the trust of like, because I think almost all modern workflow nowadays, there is some element of 3D involved, whether you do it yourself or you get given some kind of asset to paint over, et cetera, et cetera. So yeah. there's that thing where I know that, okay, when I do this in this way, I know I can take into 3D and it's going to work. And even if I never do, for a client, you got that confidence knowing that like, this is solid, this is going to work for you. Um. So for yourself, like, is that something that you did intentionally, like thinking further down the line, thinking that, okay, obviously design is key because you mentioned that, like, all the questions you ask, all the function, everything involved, that obviously informs how things are going to look. Was 3D playing in the back of your mind when you developed this workflow for yourself as well? Because obviously you do that also, um, mm -hmm. or not. So it's a great question. And uh, it's a big, I, I think one of the best things about this tutorial is I feel like I'm saving everyone years, <laughs> years of the struggle that I went through, which is, um, you know, like I mentioned, like I, I did all this learning how to do 3D and stuff like that, right? And a big part of, uh, you know, I know this whole process is in 2D, but I want to explain why uh, I made this uh, tutorial just in 2D and just in Photoshop. Um, if you can master this tutorial, you'll realize how powerful you are. If you, um, you're powerful right off the bat if, if you can master the techniques in the tutorial. If you already know 3D, um, if you know ZBrush, like, do you, do you know, uh, like 3D, like ZBrush yeah, or anything yeah, yeah, like that? Yeah. Okay. So, yeah, you may not realize, but you, you eventually will realize how powerful you are in terms of what you can create. Because, um, when I, when I would work in 3D, I would build all these things and then I, I would paint over them, but I would add all this detail and stuff like that. But I realized when I would light them in 3D, I'm like, you really can't see a lot of the stuff that I'm designing, right? So I would realize that in the lighting scenario that I would set up, you couldn't really see all the detail that I was building in 3D. And also, it was really hard to um, detail everything in 3D because I didn't know what detail to put. I was just like guessing, right? Because I didn't take the time to figure out the design. The design was also boring, right? So I would do a really long paint over and I would spend forever doing it. And um, I would just burn myself out every single time. And I see it from other people when they paint on top of their 3D, like they burn out too, right? So when I started doing this process, and I, and I think a good example is the blades, but if you want to see the full process, look at, you know, my crawler creature or the armor up uh, character that I have is 
Okay, I'm going to answer all of the texture questions, all of the uh, uh, the mod 3D sculpting questions, all the modeling questions right now in 2D. I'm going to answer all of them. So I started doing that, and then I noticed in the legs, I was like, you know, I didn't really do anything with the legs. It's like, you know what? You really don't do anything with the legs either in 3D. <laughs> so you know what you should do? You should finish the design of the legs in 2D. So I did. I took the time, figured out the legs, figured out the belt, figured out everything. And it's just like, okay, there is the 3D character you got to build. Now, because you built it from scratch, you're like, you know, that's just the sphere. That's a sphere. If I grab another sphere and I stretch it, that could be that detail. All you got to do is make it look like the sketch. That's all you got to do. You don't got to treat it like a 3D modeling test. You just got to make it look the same. So I went to 3D and I built out the entire character so fast because I answered all the questions. It's like, oh, what do the knee pads look like? Oh, it's in the sketch. I just mm -hmm. got to copy the sketch. Did all of that. And then it's just like, oh, what do I want the render to look like? So I look up reference of cool lighting to answer that question, right? So I don't have to guess. And then I rendered it and I was like, oh my God, like this is the most detailed 3D thing I've ever made. And I did it in like a fraction of the time it would usually mm -hmm. take me. Um, so that's why I uh, decided to create this tutorial also, because it's like, look, everyone, if you take the time to, uh, and, and I go over this in tutorial, answer all the questions that are gonna come up in the tutorial. What makes you powerful is when you hand this off, and you know, you touched on it too. When you hand this off, like let's say they like the design, they say it's approved, uh, move on to the next design. No 3D, no anything, just move on to the next design. When that design goes to the 3D modeler, they don't have any questions. They just build it in 3D and it's done. If they're a senior, they can add the detail and all that stuff to make it look really cool but it's going to be loyal to your design. They're going to tweak it and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. But you answered all of production's questions. Now you, um, Aaron, since you know 3D, imagine if you took the time to do the 2D design and you spent years figuring yourself out by trying all these different techniques, Blender, ZBrush, but now you answer this question of design. You can spend one day, two days, no pressure, finish the design in 2D flat in Photoshop symmetry. You, now you can use your 3D skills. You know how to render, you know how to do textures. Find some, find an image with cool lighting of your creature, your character, and, and cop, copy the lighting of that thing. Answer that question. And you just design something in a fraction of the time compared to any time in the past. Mm. And then now, you'll have what I, I'm pretty confident you'll have what I had, which is just like, you'll be walking outside, you know, or hanging out with your kids or something. And then suddenly you'll think of an idea of this cool sci-fi thing, this ship or whatever is in your head. And you're so excited because you're going to go to your desk, you're going to design it. You're gonna, you already know what it's going to look like. You're like, oh, I could light it like Blade Runner. Go grab some frames. And, and you know how to finish any idea that pops in your head and it changes everything. Precisely. And I guess like one way to summarize it, it's almost IKEA. Like you got you're making your own instructions and then you just kind of put it together. Whereas yeah. the other way around is you kind of putting the pieces together, but you don't have the instructions, but then you're kind of like cutting things the wrong length and you know, it's like a constant back and forth. Um yeah. as opposed to here's the here's the manual and build yeah. it and you're done. Yeah, yeah. And uh I mean, this process definitely needs to be practiced, right? Designing in 2D. But the better you get, I think the hardest part is letting yourself explore your imagination. See, see, see the characters and creatures in the clouds like you would outside. Do the mm -hmm. same thing. Mm -hmm. But but take the time to paint it out of, of the canvas, right? Really, really bring it out so people know what it is, what your intention is. And then use your other tools to really... Uh, really polish it up and um yeah it's it's an awesome feeling and obviously like when you're working for clients when you work professionally obviously there are like things you have to deliver and there's certain yeah. standards to be met but mm -hmm. when it comes to personal stuff you can cut a fair few corners not mm -hmm. in like a cheating kind of way but you're mm -hmm. your own art director there's a lot of decisions you make almost instantly whilst you're creating um so is your personal process too different to 
what's taught in the course and what you do for clients or is it the same? It's exactly the same. Like that's why if you see the demo the other day, um, it's exactly, it's, yeah. well, I mean, it, it might look easy, but then once you try it, you'll, you'll realize there are some things that are very difficult. And, and that's why I made the tutorial to cover those things. But when I'm at home, uh, I practice the process all the time. I have folders and folders and folders of ideas that I sketched out in 2D. Um, or like I'll start and just like come back to and, and I just want to focus on the design and just get the idea out of my head. And, and what I do is I challenge myself. I'll do this. And I used to do this when I was younger too. It's just like, what if I had to, use this method to design a dragon. It's like, am I going to do a profile view of a dragon? Like, okay, I'll do that. And it's just like, okay, where did you get stuck? It's like, you know, it looks kind of flat. It's like, okay, maybe I will add, like, I'll do the silhouette, but I'll add a little light on top, like, so because that's the top of the head, if there was a light above them. Now I'll add photos. And it's just like, okay, like now it's making sense. It's making sense. And then I'll start and I'll really take the time to explore and challenge myself. You know, what if I had to do this? What if I had to do that using this method? And then I had to tweak little things, like even the acts in the tutorial, like it is very different. That's why I'm mm -hmm. like, hey, try this symmetrically first and then cut it in half and then start working on your design. Because maybe doing it symmetrically, you're spending way too much time trying to get a silhouette down. Mm -hmm. For me, For me, that was the case, but I'm transparent about it. So, so yeah, I do it all the time and I practice as much as I can. When I don't practice it, it's very obvious. I feel like mm. it'll be the most basic design in my portfolio yes, because I yes. was just too lazy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. I think it's key. Like practice definitely loosens up your brain, like to come up with ideas. Like, I guess it's like working out, like you could have a great run of working out. And then if you don't do it for like six months, it's almost back to zero. Like you, in your brain, yeah. you feel like you're super strong still, but when you go lift that, lift those, you know, those, those dumbbells, or whatever, your arm falls off. It's like, oh, you didn't train your muscles enough as well. So yeah, like practice yeah. and that muscle memory is key, I think as well. Yeah. You know, I think my advice for anyone that's trying this process, um, if they try it with other things, um, or even with the dagger, really pay attention to yourself. Like if you get to a point where, you know, you haven't finished an area really from that point, acknowledge it from that point on. You should do like 10, 10 uh, versions of that area that you're struggling with and practice. Practice until that area that you struggle with is the easiest thing for you to do. Mm -hmm. Because what's going to happen when it's time for you to design something, you design it all like in, in minutes because you're no longer intimidated by that. Like for me with the legs, I, I told myself, hey man, you're going to have to practice designing legs and boots and stuff like that. It's like, okay. So that way, next time I start a design, I'm not intimidated by it. I know how to solve that problem. Mm -hmm. And uh, I can have a lot of fun with the areas that I get excited to design, but the other areas no longer intimidate me. I don't get stuck anymore. Mm -hmm. So really practice the things that you get stuck in. And with the subject matter in the course, obviously it, it's weapons, it's axes, there's dag. Is it axes or what's the plural of axes? Anyway, um, axes. Got, yeah, I think yeah, axes is good. daggers. <laughs> um, obviously, there's some hard surface in there as well. Um, but I love how it's ornamental, almost like you know that Rivendell kind of vibe and kind of look as well. Like you can see that in the Rivendell market or something, um, if that ever were to exist. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But obviously, like in your portfolio, and this is just me personally. Like you know, I this always gets me excited. Like when there's yeah. like it's like you got everything. Like, you know, all sorts of like different type of things. What is your favorite subject matter? Do you have one? Uh, you know, um, for a long time, it was creatures just because, I mean, everyone loves creatures, right? They're fun to do, right? But even with that, like, I was just like, man, I make some basic creatures. Like, I don't do anything that's unique. Half the time I'm copying other designers and the way they do it and like, no. And I remember one designer I really like talked about, cause he, he would draw cars. Right. And he talked about the car being a creature mm -hmm. and like those little things like really stuck with me. And so now like, I really try to approach everything the same way. And now it, it went from loving creatures to now I, I really love like doing anything where I can just 
design it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Like, if, like even if I were to give an assignment to do a ship, like I know how I would design it in 2D, but I'm just like, oh man, like my ideas would just be like so crazy. Like I can already think I'm like, yeah, what if there's a big hole in the ship? Like, and it was like this big, you know, like donut shaped thing, but it was like the coolest ship. How could I make it look like the coolest ship? And mm -hmm. like, you know, and uh, those things get me really excited. Just, the, just the design process, yeah. you know. Yeah. So it's actually like the the core essence of that creative process is basically what you're interested in the most, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Just the process itself, because especially if you get this technique down, you'll start to get excited about designing anything mm -hmm. it doesn't matter what it's like a tree it's like oh man how would i do a tree using this technique and yeah. then you'll start creating the craziest trees and you'll get really excited because you're like i know no one has thought of this i've yes. never seen it before and then once you take the time to use those tools to to illustrate your idea you, you're going to be the only one who has that in their portfolio the only one and that's that's powerful right that's crazy dude it is it is it's like that's all you want, right? Like when you have ideas, you just want to realize them. And if you can have something that will help you do that, that's all you yeah. need. Um, yeah. It's like, you know, like it's like driving a car. Like you want to get to A to B. Yeah, you can walk it. But if you're hundreds of miles away, having something that really gets you where you want to get to, yeah. that tool will definitely help you. Um, In terms of like, I'd love to get to know what we've, talk, we've spoken about, obviously, like the type of art and artists that really inspire you. Obviously, you work on like you know in the entertainment industry. What is mm -hmm. your favorite type of, I guess, realm to create in? Like, is it games? Is it films? Is it something else? Like, do you have a preference? Or again, is it the same? Like, as long as they give an excuse to design, you're down. So I love both. Like, I love. Okay, so the thing about film is, like, e each each you know genre has its, or I guess type of studio or whatever content that you're delivering has it's like really cool things about it and it's challenges like with film you get to see the result on screen right and that's like a huge huge awesome thing but the deadlines are extremely short you know you might have uh usually you have less time to focus on the design and you have to make a decision like right now because your design is due immediately and you have and in my experience, you really have to make it look pretty much, you know, real, re as realistic as possible within a very small uh, window of time. And so uh, that's challenging, but it's also really thrilling because, again, you see that final result and you're working with some really talented people. And especially when you see your design in motion, it's like the craziest thing ever. It, it seems surreal when you see it on screen. You're like, what <laughs> and um so that's what's awesome and in games uh you spend a lot more time working on the design and, and making sure that it's a fun design and you get you get much more time to explore imagination and as many options as needed and uh but the restriction on games is what what platform is it going to be on? Is it going to be on the Switch? Is it going to be on PlayStation 5? Uh, Xbox. What's the Xbox called now? Is Xbox. Good question. I have is it no one? idea. Was that an older version? Xbox One? I don't even it? know. Okay. But it might be. It might Sorry, be. Microsoft. <laughs> <laughs> so, or is it on Steam? Like, like what yeah. platform is it going to be on? Because there is a limit on textures, right? On polygons. But in, in film, you can only go higher. Usually what you're coming up with is not enough. Like if you're designed, like even the blades I designed in this tutorial, not enough information visually. It's enough to build a majority of it, but the awesome modelers and texture artists are going to take it to a level that you never mm -hmm. would have imagined, right? And there's also information that isn't really in those images. It's purely, like I said in the tutorial, it's just a conversation starter because there's so much more that you can do. Now in game, luckily Unreal Engine 5 is coming out, so it's going to push what we can do. But are, but also, I mean, are you going to work for a studio that wants to take on that challenge mm -hmm. of making something look realistic? Because, um, yeah, I mean, I haven't really run into that so far. Like I, I've been asked to deliver artwork the way I would deliver in film, but usually the final result I see um, is is a t slightly toned down version because we can't get to that level of information. So 
I, I think right now, like I really enjoy being in games, but just because it allows me to kind of relax a little bit and, and mm -hmm. have fun exploring mm -hmm. my imagination. Um, but I still love film, but I'm not, I'm happy in games at the moment though. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And taking off your, although it's impossible because it's like fused in, <clears throat> taking off your artist hat. Um, yeah. As a consumer, like what kind of things are your go tos or has inspired you? Maybe even like growing up, like obviously for myself. I think it's 30 years this year at like Jurassic Park. Like that just blew my mind when I first yeah. saw it. Changed yeah. my whole life. Um, what are those like films or games that, that are for you that are like almost career defining, identity defining, life defining things that you saw, you experienced that completely just blew your mind? Yeah, you know, I think it's what most people of my generation likes, like Jurassic Park. I still remember the first time I saw a dinosaur. I was asking my mom, how did they do that? Like, how are their dinosaurs? Like, you know, and it still holds up really well. Um, that T-Rex, you know, like mind blowing, um, like Terminator 2 and uh, Alien and Aliens, Predator, like all those movies really had an effect on me. Um, Jason and the Argonauts, you know, Ray Harryhausen uh, mm -hmm. design and, and claymation that definitely had an impact on me because I thought it looked so realistic and, and it really blew my mind. And it still has an effect on me today whenever I see it because I'm like, it still looks real to me. <laughs> um, those things had a really big impact on me. And I think, I think one of the biggest things that also influenced me was I used to collect uh, Marvel trading cards okay. and there was a deck called, uh, it was like 95, 96 Fleer Ultra. Uh, and it was a series of cards where all these different artists would take uh, these comic book characters like Wolverine, Nightcrawler, stuff like that. And they would paint them with oils and make them look realistic. And I remember how it was almost like shocking to see because like, it just was like, just seeing the interpretation, it like really blew my mind. And it was almost confusing to see because I never imagined that these comic, comic book characters, these cartoons that I saw could look realistic. Mm. And, and I remember just, and I still have like all those cards and like it, I, I eventually bought them as an adult. I found them and like, it still blows my mind to look at them because I'm just like, yeah. wow. Like, wow. And so, so that always impacted me and, and, and I always gravitated towards art. Yeah. Because of those. Yeah. Yeah. I think inspiration is, it's weird because it's a very profound word and obviously like it's self-explanatory, but it's very underrated as well. Like we, mm -hmm. when you think about something that you think, oh, that inspires me, I just explain that as to why and mm -hmm when it's timeless, like no matter whenever you see it, like Jurassic Park again, we could watch it in 30 years time and it will mm -hmm. still show. And like, even like you mentioned those older films, I remember when you mentioned Jason the Argonauts, one that I remember watching back in the day was Clash of Titans, which all the stop motion. Yeah. And that, stuff and... uh, Seven Voices seem bad. Seem bad is actually what I meant. Yeah. Ah, okay. Okay. But so yeah, like yeah, even that one, things, obviously yeah. looking back at it now, it is like, yeah, you can see it's like very janky and stuff, but there's something magical about the impact it had when I saw it. Yeah, and when they made the remake with all the CGI and stuff, it had no magic. Different, that yeah, magic old is one gone. with those, you know, like low frame rate animation and yeah, yeah like that. there's like this disturbing, you know, uh, movement and stuff, yes. right? And the way they place the camera and like the scale of things is like so odd. And I appreciate, yeah, I mean, you know, there's a generation now that looks at that stuff, like the current version, and they're just like their minds are blown. Yeah, so it's yeah. like yeah it's like it's like okay it's cool but it's not what i had <laughs> yeah and it's true it's true it's true <laughs> yeah, um yeah. at least we can we could talk all night uh yeah, yeah, like, all yeah. night for me obviously <laughs> the rest of the day for yourself um before we wrap up any final words to your students i'm sure will be flocking to sign up take your course and improve their design thinking design skills what would you like to see from them um, what message do you have from them? And obviously any final thoughts or plugs from yourself um, before we wrap up? Yeah. Um, so thanks for having me. You know, I really appreciate it sure. to talk about, to talk about art and whatnot. And um, so to everyone that is thinking about picking up this tutorial, um, I think, you know, number one, ask yourself, 
you know, what, what it is that you want to be. If you want to be a concept artist or an illustrator or whatever it is, if you, if you want to be a concept artist, um, really think about the previous tutorials that you've seen before and how you walked out of those tutorials and, um, think about the areas that you struggled in. Think about when you have an idea and you're really excited to sit down at your desk and open up Photoshop or ZBrush or whatever it is, or even your iPad. What are the, like, what prevents you from finishing an idea? Like, why, why are you not finished? Do you find yourself just going to art station to find inspiration, which is not a bad thing, right? But are you finding yourself starting something but not finishing it? Uh, what, what is it that's preventing you? Is there something preventing you from doing it? If you don't know, um, and you want to explore that part of yourself and start really cranking out ideas and start having fun with, with your own imagination, then I suggest, I highly recommend that you pick up this tutorial because I design, I designed this tutorial with Learn Squared for you specifically to address those issues of, of not knowing how to explore your imagination. Now it's not to say that it's like the tutorial that beats all other tutorials. But my goal for this is to open up your imagination to, to get you comfortable with exploring uh, yourself and paint and, and what you can see inside of sh uh, other shapes. And maybe that uh, will help you build the confidence uh, to design your own things. But also when you watch other tutorials, you'll get excited because you know how you're going to execute the ideas that you learned in that tutorial because you took the time to explore your own imagina imagination. So I highly recommend it. If you're, a, if you're a beginner and you know Photoshop, this is, this is the time because I go over Photoshop skills too. I go over everything you're going to need. Um, if you're a professional getting into this, um, you just want to try a different technique, try it out. You may, it, you may have the same issues that I had and, uh, you, you're holding yourself back and, you know, especially with the pre-order time uh, until June 13th, right? Yes. I would say I would say absolutely take advantage, and um, I feel like this is a tutorial you can rewatch many times. And we put in a lot of work into this, and um, I, I really strongly believe like th this is a solid tutorial uh, to start with. Perfectly put. Um, the links are all in the description, and if you are listening to this when it airs or before June thirteenth, like we said, um, sign up. You get yourself a nice discount as well, um, but you also get to learn. As soon as the course drops on june 13th yeah. Please, thank you very much it's amazing chatting thank with you, you man and yeah, i can't great wait chat. to steal your workflow into my and fuse into my own yeah thanks man appreciate uh, appreciate you having me on and thanks everyone for listening yes. simply epic from Luis, and a huge thanks to him for being so honest with us sign up for rethink your weapon design today by hitting the links in this episode's description and if you sign up before june 13th you'll take advantage of some juicy pre-order pricing. We can't wait to see what you'll design from this course. I've been your host, Aaron Danda. Till next time.